Welcome back to the stages of recovery. This is unit two of the quick start guide for recovery from addiction and co-occurring disorders. In this section, you're going to learn about the stages of recovery and personal relapse warning signs in each stage. And I say the word personal relapse warning signs because not everybody's relapse triggers or relapse warning signs are the same. It's important that you figure out what yours are and things that work best to help you address your relapse warning signs and your relapse triggers. In the last section, we talked about the withdrawal period. The next period, which lasts about four weeks, is called the honeymoon or the pink cloud period. During this time, your brain chemicals are starting to rebalance a little bit, which is awesome. Your sleep is starting to improve, which is really awesome because that helps you have more energy. That helps you um, increase your ability to concentrate. You know, sleep is super important. And your nutrition is probably improving. Now, when you start eating well during that withdrawal period, that's great. You're giving your body the raw building blocks it needs. But it takes a little time to convert food into brain chemicals and hormones and get that factory system, if you want to think about it that way, in your body functioning optimally. So during the honeymoon period, your body is now starting to be able to use that nutrition more efficiently to make the neurochemicals and you're starting to, you know, experience that rebalancing. Your circadian rhythms are getting normalized. Your circadian rhythms are when, basically, when you're awake versus when you're asleep. And that is controlled in large part by light amounts. So you want to have plenty of light during the day. But your circadian rhythms control a whole lot more than your sleep-wake cycle. They control the um, cortisol levels in your body. I ideally, your cortisol levels, your stress hormone, is supposed to be highest in the morning because that gets you motivated to get out of bed. And then it's supposed to drop throughout the day. When your circadian rhythms are not in alignment, that may not happen. So it may be difficult to get to sleep when you're supposed to get to sleep and get out of bed when you're supposed to get out of bed. During the honeymoon period, if you're taking good care of yourself, you're starting to get those brain chemicals rebalanced so melatonin is secreted when it's supposed to and you're trying to get quality sleep, your circadian rhythms are going to start to get normalized. As a result of all this, you're probably going to have increased energy, enthusiasm, and optimism. You're starting to feel less sick and tired all the time. And that's one of the things I hear from people a lot in early recovery. They decided to try to get better because they were sick and tired of being sick and tired. During this period, people report that they're feeling better. This is one of those really dangerous periods for a lot of people because residential treatment is often 30 days which means right in the middle of the honeymoon period when they're starting to feel pretty good, they leave residential treatment. And it's easy to get overconfident when you're feeling this good and think, oh, I've got this thing licked, when not so much. It's important to remember that. This is the honeymoon period. This is the beginning of a great, wonderful change and journey for you but not to get too confident too soon. People often feel they're cured when they reach this stage because they aren't feeling sick and tired as much anymore. They're starting to sleep more normally and their brain chemicals that help them feel happy and relaxed are getting replenished and they're not dependent on the addictive behavior to make that happen. In the case of people with mood disorders, a lot of medications that you take for mood disorders or changes that you make in your behaviors to address mood disorders, you won't start really feeling the effects of those things until you get, you know, three to four weeks into your treatment process. So people who experience mood disorders are often in the same sort of stage around the five to six week mark where they're sleeping better, their nutrition is better, their 
um, have increased energy, enthusiasm, and optimism. For a lot of people, regardless of whether it's an addiction or a mental health diagnosis, I see them start to backslide in what they're doing in order to stay healthy and happy. They think, well, okay, finally, that's over. Kind of like they were getting over a cold and they can resume their old behaviors. And that is just not the case. Family members often view this honeymoon period as the beginning of a relapse. They've seen their loved one, they've seen you get to a point where you were starting to feel better and you thought you had it kicked, so to speak. And they know from prior experience that when this starts to happen, it's not long before you start sliding back down that mountain again. It is super important during this time to figure out how you're going to keep going up the hill instead of backsliding. I want you to spend about 40 minutes thinking about how you know when you have reached the honeymoon period. You know, a lot of that is just going to be noticing that you feel a lot better. But what are some signs that tell you you've reached this period, which can be sort of dangerous for people because they start feeling overconfident? What are your relapse warning signs and triggers during the honeymoon period for your addiction, for your anger, anxiety, and depression? And I encourage you, I'm, I'm big on columns, on a piece of paper, make four columns, addiction, anger, anxiety, depression, and identify your relapse warning signs for those things during this honeymoon period. When you have tried to get better before, when you have tried to stop using before and you started feeling better, you know, what were some things that triggered you to backslide? What are some things that trigger your anger, your anxiety, or your depression? We know that when people start feeling unpleasant emotions, that they're more likely to relapse in their addiction. It's important to be aware that this is a very fragile time. What do you need to do to address your relapse warning signs and address your overconfidence in order to keep moving forward? The next phase is called the wall, and this lasts for two to six months um, or from months two on to month six, so about four months. During this period, there is a super high risk of relapse because you are feeling a lot better right now. You know. Your brain chemicals have really started to stabilize. Life is resuming, but stressors are also still resuming during this time. You may have had a lot of help for the first month or two months. You may have been doing, you know, if, if you're in substance abuse treatment, you may have been doing 90 and 90. That's 90 meetings in 90 days. During this period, you know, you may have backed off on the intensity of your treatment, of your recovery work, and this becomes really uh, a really dangerous place to be. In addition, you're also probably starting to maybe go back to work and take on more things that you used to take on that people may have been helping you with through your early recovery process. Unfortunately, during this time, your new coping skills are not yet fully developed. So it's probably going to feel more intense than it will in, in a few more months when you have strengthened those coping skills and when your body has done even more recovering. You may have intermittent bursts of withdrawal symptoms. This is your post-acute withdrawal issue. Uh, depression, irritability, low energy, loss of enthusiasm, anxiety, and feeling easily overwhelmed. Now, these are really repeats a lot from that withdrawal period. I want you to go back to that list and make sure that you have identified two to three ways to handle your withdrawal symptoms and that you're checking in on those regularly at least once a day and when you notice that you're experiencing one or more of those withdrawal symptoms that you're taking action right away in order to prevent more distress and potential relapse remember during this period your brain and body are still recovering and it's going to take 
time. And that is one of those things that most of us really hate. You know, we really, we're, we're very impulsive. We want what we want and we want it now, or sometimes even we want it yesterday. And patience is not one of our strong virtues. Unfortunately, in recovery, it's going to have to be. Spend about 40 minutes re reviewing your relapse warning signs and triggers for addiction, but also anger, anxiety, and depression during this period. Now, remember, life is resuming. You're experiencing new stressors or exposing yourself to stressors that, you, that existed already that you've been shielding yourself from. It's important to remember if your anger, anxiety, or depression start to go up, you're at risk for addiction relapse. If your addiction issues start to go up, if you start having more cravings, that's probably going to increase your anxiety and maybe your feelings of hopelessness and helplessness and depression. You need to be able to address all of those things. So tighten up that relapse prevention plan now. Make sure that you have things that work in the first unit you identified ways to address relapse warning signs in the withdrawal period two or three ways for each relapse warning sign that you have you've probably used some of those now and it's important to go back and things that you thought would help thought would be useful that maybe didn't weren't as helpful as, as you had hoped Maybe it's time to replace those. Now's time to tune up that relapse prevention plan. Get rid of things that didn't work and add new things to try until you get a system in place where you know that you have, ha have tools that will work for each one of those relapse warning signs. Recovery begins when you make the decision to stop using. Remember, getting clean means allowing your body to be free from the overstimulation of addictive substances and behaviors. Sobriety means not using and acting in your sober self in your new recovery lifestyle. You've identified your relapse warning signs during the honeymoon and the wall periods and waited ways to deal with each. Add any new symptoms or triggers and tools to your relapse prevention plan. So you're going to go back to the withdrawal period and where you started your relapse prevention plan, and you're going to add additional symptoms and additional tools to continue to develop that relapse prevention plan. Continue to review your relapse warning sign list daily to identify vulnerabilities that are existing and steps you need to take right then in order to help yourself stay clean and sober.